Okay, good afternoon, Council. We have six of us right now. That is not quorum. Um, and it is just me chairing today because we no longer believe in shared governance. Woo! Woo! Um, Hierarchy! <laughs> we can go through our updates and we just cannot vote on anything. So we will go through the updates and hope others join. But if not, we'll have to do anything for voting. We can discuss today and we can vote um, virtually through Roadrunner link. Is anyone opposed to that? Going once, going twice, and that is final. Okay. Um, so we are going to um, on to the attendance. Um, we will do that now. Uh, Mike here. Dan absent. Re absent. Naomi not here yet. Uh, Stephanie here. Thank you. Alan, not here. Chad Gouge, not here. Gabe, not here yet. James, here. Thanks. Alex, here. Thank you. Taylor Lucas, here. Paul, here. Thank you. Um, great. So we have six of us. We will continue on with the approval of the agenda. Does anyone have anything they would like to change with the agenda? Because I do. Um, for board and committee announcements, I would like us to strike item E, H, I, and N, and mm -hmm. add SAB. H, I, and N. E. Yeah. Um, I know she was this. So E, and I have one as well. Yes, what do you want to strike? Or I want to add CSGC update. OK. Uh, e, H, I, what else? Um, e, H, I, and N. Paul has his hands up too. So add um, CB. And Mike's thing. CSGC. CSGC, Paul. I'd move we strike uh, J as well. We still haven't met as a committee, so. Um, that's the cross functionality task force. No, it's indigenous student resource. Oh, indigenous student yeah. resource. I must have changed and lagged on my screen, but yeah, the indigenous student resource committee. OK, is that anyone opposed any of those? Oh, nope. going once, going twice, going thrice and so moved. Um, are there any other changes anyone wants to make to today's agenda? OK, amazing. Um, now we are going into the board and committee announcements and updates. So first we have our chair updates from Taylor. Um, my update is if you have not gotten your award from the office, go do that now, please. Thank you. On to SACAB. SACAB. So um, technically SACAB's term does not end till Jan end of June. Um, I don't intend for SACAB to really, we might have one more meeting officially and then be done just to kind of use up the rest of our budgets, but I have no thing of us meeting over the summer. Um, I'm preparing transition documents as well. So, um, yeah, that's all I have. Stephanie. Um, so yeah, we just had, or at least I just attended our last, um, board meeting, um, for this semester. We were able to finalize our new bylaws for SACAB um, uh, without literally any opposition. It was super quick. Um, and other than that, I think I think that's it. Thank you both for your inklings. Um, Gabe has said there is no board of trustee update, so on to the budget committee. Good question. Do we have quorum now because Gabe and Naomi are here? Yes, we do have quorum now. Thank you, Mike. There we go. Um, budget committee, uh, I am meeting with Armando Tuesday. We're going to completely overhaul and make sure, like, figure out the budget for next year, kind of see we're going through all the receipts, all that stuff. Um, I've already created next year's budget spreadsheet as well. I've made some significant changes to um, 
from this year to next year, making a lot more cohesive, a lot more easier, categorizing things, making my own spreadsheet instead of inheriting one. Uh, and also, I plan on actually passing a budget next year. So um, those are just some thoughts from the budget committee. Um, but um, we'll have a final number of what we spent and what we're going to um, have as a number for next year. Um, hopefully Tuesday, if not at some point. So. Share those with us. Share what? Like the budget spreadsheet? Yeah, the budget spreadsheets, Mike, specifically. Yeah, when it's done, when I'm done making it, I will share it to you. Um, it's already in, in the SharePoint, actually. So um, everyone has access to it, um, the new one at least. Um, nothing's finalized yet. Nothing's going to be finalized probably till August. But uh, this is just me doing my predictions, do, do basically what I did last year. So great advocacy. On to James with the Judiciary Committee. Uh, Judiciary did not meet this week. Uh, just because I had work. I don't think we'll obviously be meeting anymore. So thank you to everyone who joined in that. I will say the only thing that I, we did not finish was the restructuring of the accountability process. Uh, both me, the council, and Dean Raga have been super busy these past couple of weeks. So unfortunately, that won't be passed this semester. But hopefully, I can still make a structure and pass it on to the next council and they can go off with that as they will. Uh, but that's from, uh, about it from the judiciary. Thank you, James. On to the TSEC PR committee. Do you mind if I take that one, James? Yeah. So um, PR um, is basically done for the semester. But, um, I'm working with Armando. My plan is to make a bunch of marketing material over the summer instead of like during the school year. Um, so a lot of the stuff I'm currently gathering information from all the counselors and um, hopefully should have some PR material made to start off the summer or start off the new year. So um, and We'll go from there. So that's all I have there, though. Thank you. On to the cross functionality task force. Um, Paul. Um, as I said last week, I, I don't actually uh, have um, time to make it to that meeting. I have a scheduling conflict. Um, but one thing I will say about the committee that I've noticed is troubling is that, uh, or the task force, I'll say, um, is when we talk about uh, faculty workload reduction, uh, it seems like all the conversations that are happening in that task force are all around what else can faculty do. And so you, we really don't hear much in the way of um, reduction as much as we hear about like um, additional things faculty could be doing. And so it's a, it's a, it's a strange kind of transformation that the uh, task force has taken on. Um, and I've talked to some faculty about it and they're just, you know, some of them are just like, well, you know, some of us want to have less than a 60 hour work week, you know, um, and so I don't know, I'm somewhat concerned and I think that we should reassess our participation in this as a, as a whole around like what's our goal as a, as a student government in regards to the task force and I don't know. Yes, Mike. So the cross is this a task force that's going to be going on throughout the summer, I'm assuming. I couldn't tell you because I um I don't know if they know this, but because our term ends in June, I don't assume you're going to be on that task force anymore after no. us. Um, so, so well, yeah, <laughs> which, which makes sense. You're not um, makes yes. sense then. So, um, do they know that at least? Hey, students, we're going to be out for at least two months doing our recesses, doing our kind of uh, our team building stuff like that, not meeting officially. I can send an email, but I don't think they're expecting students. Um, Paul, do you have a better answer than me? Um, it's not much better, honestly. I think um, a large part of their work is um, concluding, if I've understood it correctly. Okay. And so um, I'm just I'm just saying, in, insofar as the faculty workload is concerned, um, we we may want to reassess moving forward. But um, hard to say, you know, especially having missed that last meeting, I'm really uh, a little uninformed on where they're where they're at and where they're going right now. Thank you. Um, Okay, this concludes cross functionality task force on to open floor announcements and updates. Does anyone have an update they would love to share? Um, Alex. Hi, so um, I would like to start a committee for just like the arts. I uh, just call it like the arts committee um, and then I will be a part of it as a member of the public. I would just like to formally start it at this meeting and then encourage other council members to uh, take that up if they feel so inclined. Um, I know that one of the larger theaters on campus had a flood, uh, I think last year. And so um, that could be like a, a decent project for next year. Um, and just to protect some of the funding that goes into the arts. Um, so yeah, uh, if there's any 
council members that are that have been elected for next year that would like would want to help me with that. I'd be uh, really appreciative. I'll speak and then I'll let Mike go. Um, Alex, I think this is a wonderful idea, but I am wondering if the place to do this would be in like a public comment section for the next year's council. Um, I'm assuming if we start this committee today, we would need a chair. Is that correct? What about uh, yes, go ahead, Mike. So all committees are going to be, so there's only four committees next year that are going to be there established and that's the judiciary committee that's the budget committee that's the sustainability committee and that's the pr committee those are the standing committees that can be there any other committee needs to be reactivated by the new council so if we open it up today it's going to be deactivated once our term ends and then at that point you'd have to find someone on the new council who wants to take up your offer on this alex yeah alex is there anyone here today that would Want to take this up? That's running again. That's uh, that'll be running next year. Um, I think that's a question for the new council. Um, I won't be. He, I have too many obliga like obligations. Next council to take another committee up. Um, Alex, how about you send the new council an email? Does that work? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Um, and I would love to be a part of that next year too. Um, on any other updates? Okay, um, going into advisor updates, I don't believe they are here with us today. Nope. Um, so we don't need that either. And we will come back to public comment at 3 p.m. So we will now go into old business. Uh, CSGC, CSGC, and SAB, SAB. Old business, it says SACAB resolution. Is that? CSGC. Oh, whoops, okay. CSGC, Mike, and then SAB Taylor. I forgot. <laughs> yes. So my first? You can go first. So um, CSGC, Carter Student Government Coalition. Um, I took a small group yesterday to the Capitol. I took Gabe, I took Denny, I took Will, and I took Matt of the council to get them kind of situated with what that coalition does and who they are, essentially. Um, uh, CSGC is actually having a little bit of trouble with um, re retention, so we're going to individually do some uh, our own outreach over the summer, like at least form a kind of a connection in Denver, so you can get the, the different student governments in Denver a little more connected. Um, but um, most likely those are going to be your CSGC reps for next year, those four who went to the Capitol. So um, I'm super excited. They're very attentive. Um, they asked great questions. They met the governor. So um, yeah, it was awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Um, going to SAB. Um, James, do you want to say anything on it? Okay, I'll go ahead. Uh, so me and James are presenting the Student Affairs Board, our um, our final our recommendations to the Board of Trustees on June 1st at, in between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Um, me and James have been practicing the presentation. We are very excited. Um, if any of you would like to join us for moral support, feel free. Um, and that is all we have for SAB. Now going into old business have the SACAB resolution address the lack of representation on ABOD. Go ahead. So I'll, I'll add to this. Um, this resolution's already been passed by CCD. It's already been passed by SACAB. It's already been passed by C Denver. Um, we just have not endorsed it yet. It's a letter kind of addressing the lack of representation on ABOD. Um, unless someone really wants to, me to read it. It's just, this is just asking for an endorsement from us before our term ends. Um, yeah. So, I mean, by it, if there's no other kind of wants for me to read this, a motion that we just call the question. Um, I would actually like to discuss some part. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, I withdraw my motion. Stephanie also has her hand up. So um, I will go first then, Stephanie. Um, I am curious about the, I believe, gosh, it was so long ago, I think when I read this, that it said that, um, did it mention... What are those those closed door meetings? What are those called? So it's called um, executive session. Executive session, and that would be saying that the ABOD representative should be able to go into those. Yes, we're asking for our representative to be in on those meetings as well. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just asking because I know with the original creation of TSAC, one of the things that TSAC members were not supposed to do. I know it doesn't say in our governing documents anymore, but I did want to mention that in the communal document, it said that none of us were supposed to go into executive session. And this was because they wanted to make everything as transparent as possible. 
This is SACA, this isn't TSAC. Yes, but SACA members, the ABOD for this year may be someone who is on TSAC. So this, this is an, so you're, re, you're referencing an old, so th is this in our constitution that we can, no? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is just, a, this, is, this is an attempt and I don't think it's gonna be met very kindly by ABOD for our representative on ABOD to join in on that their executive session and mm -hmm. like advocate behind closed doors, the interests of the students. That's what the original intent of that is. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd argue that SACAB members have their own set of bylaws that mm -hmm. no, that our bylaws and our governing documents do not supersede the SACAB ones because supersede the SACAB ones come directly from the state. So I wouldn't argue that they supersede those. Um, I'm not saying they do. I'm just saying like, um, as we have um, to be on SACAB, you need to be a member, a council member first. Right? Yes. So, but I, 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 and I mean, I don't even think they're in the document anymore. So I don't think, okay. I don't think it matters too much. Um, unless it's down there. We'll do Stephanie and then Paul. Thank you for bringing that up, Taylor. I don't think Taylor was trying to like um, undermine this creation at all or the document. I think he was just trying to serve as a place of history. <clears throat> and if we agreed with it, then you know, so be it. Um, but I kind of just wanted to explain the document a little bit more since I think it's important for everyone to kind of know what it means. Um, so the whole purpose of this document, um, due to the amount, um, to the increased amount of executive sessions held by um, the board of directors this semester, um, I think they've held one almost, if not every um, meeting that we've had thus far. Um, and both the representative from SACAB and the faculty senate are not invited <coughs> to participate in these meetings, excuse me, um, and they're asked to leave the room. So what we had proposed, or this document proposes, is um, it kind of outlines the duties of the SACAB representative, why we think it's important to have a representative within those meetings as well. Um, and we offer up um, the, we offer that the representative signs a non-disclosure agreement in order to be a part of those meetings. The reason for this being is because they do value um, their privacy when it is that they're having these conversations and these discussions. Um, although you do know what it is that they're talking about beforehand, um, being able to engage in these meetings in a formal setting not only offers great um, like work experience or experience in um, engaging with business deals, but it also allows the representative to give more of that student experience and that student um, perspective when they're having these kinds of meetings. So although I do want to respect the history of not having um, any kind of TSAC member involved in executive session. I also want to value the student perspective when it is that they're having so many um, executive sessions in one semester, or not even one semester, um, the entire academic year. So that's kind of the background, the context into why this document was created. Um, and also thank you for bringing that up, um, Taylor, as well. Thank you for the amazing clarification, Stephanie. On to Paul. I just want to say, I think as it stands, um, our, when our representatives are excluded from executive session, we're in the dark. And so I think the intention of transparency is preserved in this action, um, because in order to like be transparent about what's going on at that level, we need to be able to sit at that table. Um, mm -hmm. We're not trying to like join a, um, a, the work in the dark, so to speak. And that's in part why I am opposed to um, sections, I think 19 through 21, uh, the parts about the non-disclosure agreement and i would i would motion to amend this document to strike um the therefore concerning the non-disclosure agreement i think that that actually puts us at a disadvantage i think it would actually put the uh it, it would prevent the SACAB representative from being able to report back to us about like what exactly happened they would essentially just have joined um these in the dark meetings and it would have increased by one person would we have added student voice i don't know but that's essentially my um, motion here is to strike 19 through 22. Um, he needs a second for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna let Stephanie respond now, but we still have this motion. If anyone wants to second that at any point, but Stephanie, go ahead. Yeah, so um, 
the reason for offering up a non-disclosure agreement is because, uh, yes, you're correct. And I, I think the reason why I raised my hand was just clarifying that um, that is exactly what would happen. The individual who would be the board of um, the representative for the board of directors would not be able to relay any of the information in these meetings to the general body, to other students, um, to their respective institutions. Um, and so I don't want that to be something that's like um, confused or not clarified respectively. They would not be able to share. It would just be an opportunity for that representative to have some great business um, experience and, you know, dealing with business deals again and also offering up that student perspective, which is their duty as being the student representative to the board of directors. Um, the reasoning for offering this up is because it, nonetheless, it, you would have to, um, they would, if we, and I think it's a great, I, I understand your perspective when it comes to this, Paul, um, but that's kind of the context for adding that portion into it. Thank you, Stephanie. We have Mike, then me. And then I'll just add, um, we're, I'm, I'm now looking to change this document. Like I said, it's already been passed by the other SGAs and um, SACAP's not gonna take up another, it's already been sent to ABOD as well. Um, so it's already on one of their dockets because we already passed it. So um, it's more of an endorsement type of thing. I'm not looking to change this document. Thank you, Mike. Um, I was wondering, I wanna ask like maybe a scenario question sure. about this. Um, so in these um, executive session, can the person who would be the ABOD rep talk about um, kind of how the conversation went, but not like name names? Um, yes. So you can be very general in what, you, and um, I mean, this is my assumption. You can be very general what the discussion is, probably not specifics. Um, my reasoning for this is, I mean, I'd rather have someone in the room um, bringing forth the interests of the students rather than not, because mm -hmm. I think that representation is important. So um, I think like generally you can give a general update. Hey, when the executive session, we talked about this, this and this. I represent us discussing this, whatever. I think that's better than nothing. I want to just jump in and say, I want to just say no. We can't really answer that because we've never been in executive session. Yeah. The real cut bone and dry answer would be whatever it is that is listed before they go into executive session, you're allowed to relay. But once you sign a non-disclosure agreement, I believe nothing that is said during that meeting can be talked about after the meeting is finished. Um, so I don't want to give like a yes to an answer that neither Mike or myself know the real answer to. Okay. Correct. I agree with that. Thank you. Uh, Paul? You know, um, I really question um, how exactly we can relay the, um, the uh, conversations with students or student perspective uh, if we can't talk to students about what's going on uh, during this portion of the meeting. You know, I also um, am just generally um, kind of averse to the idea that, you know, we exist in a public institution, you know, funded in large part by tax dollars and then on the second part, our, our tuition. Um, and that goes that goes the same for CU Denver. And yet the the public is totally cut out. Um, and, is, and even more specifically, the students that um, in large part pay for this institution are cut out of conversations um, at, happening at the very highest level. I just I, I think that are including this portion in the document 19 through 22 is itself just a like a being kind of complicit in that kind of like covering up of, of stuff in a public institution I, I you know i'm sad my motion didn't receive a second you know i don't really see this as, as so much of an opportunity to get uh, like business experience as i do an opportunity to represent student voice on it um, but if the only person that can understand what's going on in the meeting is the one student there, that's the only student voice being represented on a campus with like 60,000 students. And so my question is, how do we get the voice of more students in there if we can't talk about, you know, what's happening in that meeting? Thank you, Paul. Mike? I motion to call the question. Second. Second. Okay. Um, so this is voting yes or no or abstain or whatever. Um, on this document as it is written. Um, wait, we have 
eight people. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Great. Uh, Naomi. Okay. Stephanie. As a writer of a document, I will upstate. Gabe. Yes, okay. Alex. Yeah. Paul. As it's written, no. Taylor. Mm. Yes. Mike? Yes. James? Uh, yes. All right. Um, the yeses have it. It has passed. Yeah. Right, we're on to the next item of business, which is a vote on handbook rewrite, James. Uh, so I'll just make this as quick as possible. Uh, the handbook, as of right now, or the updated version, is complete. Um, I've only added two things in there uh, based off feedback from Taylor and Gabe. For Gabe, he had mentioned that we should probably put in that if there's no TSAC member present inside our office, members of the public should not have access because obviously we have a lot of our own stuff in there. I agree, so that is implemented in there just so that way. Again, this isn't a governing document, but it is a rules and decorum book uh, specifically. So hopefully the next council will take that into consideration when they are letting people in and out of the office. Uh, again, Sorry, Taylor asked me to include the sustainability committee's uh, purchasing agreement. Um, I believe that's a good idea only because it is a very long and complex document that he sent me. So that is implemented in there so the new council knows how to uh, navigate that. And then just as a big reminder, most of what's in this doc document isn't necessarily new. It's just updated to fit with our governing structure and also depowers the handbook uh, from a governing document to like a rules book that we use for references and training. That's it. Thank you, James. We're gonna open it up to discussion now. Um, I know I have, gosh, I had something. I don't know where it went in my head. No, I'm sure you just it's um, gone now. It'll come back. <laughs> but does anyone else have anything they want to discuss on this? Um, okay, I came back. James, can you talk about the changes you made with um, the removal process? Yeah. So there was part in step three. So from what I've understood it, and I was obviously not the original writer of this, what I understood from part of the three week voting process is we would motion to call a vote to remove. This wouldn't remove them, this would vote to we should, if we should actually remove. The original way that was set up was it had to be unanimous minus the person who was being removed. I felt like unanimous was a little too aggressive just because at the same time it's hard to get that type of you know sentiment depending on what it is so i brought it down just a two-thirds majority uh so instead of 12 people it's now back down to nine um so it's just more of like a change in that number and then clarification of how the process works so you would vote like mike would motion for call to should we vote to remove taylor and we would vote if we got the two-thirds majority, then we would move into the actual vote of removal. If that gets two-thirds majority, then Taylor is removed. If it does not get to the two-thirds majority, that person is no longer removed. I also added a double, no double jeopardy on any person because I don't believe that if Taylor was found, you know, we didn't remove him, he shouldn't be able to a week later to be re-removed again because someone doesn't like him. So uh, that was just to ensure that all students are safe in the event that if they aren't removed, they, they can't be re-removed for the same thing, unless it's a different occurrence, obviously. Um, um, I had a question on that. So yeah. I want to ask, um, so by the double jeopardy aspect, you mean like, so could someone, if they are voted to remove this one time and they are, they are not removed, they can't be voted to be removed again? They can't be voted to remove again based off that whatever they so would have to be something else. Yeah. So okay. like if you punch someone, okay, I'm like, no, you would never. But if you did do that and we voted not to remove you, which sounded like, wow. Um, obviously next week, I'm using this as our own perspective. If Paul was like, I still think we should remove Taylor, we can't do that because we already, you know, we had the three-week process, we discussed it, mm -hmm. we voted, we voted no. It, sh it wouldn't be fair for you to constantly be attacked 
throughout the entire year. But like if a week later I went and like slashed. If you went a week later and smacked someone again, then yes, we can, we can go after that. Yeah. Some violence over here. Yeah. Like, um, I thought you know me. Okay, so like, just to be clear, you, this double, like, so where in there does it specify that then that like you can punch someone one time, be tried, it be discussed, and like you're clear, whatever, you apologize, yada, yada, yada. But then you punch somebody again, and you, you can be put up for basically trial, whatever, for that again. Like, because first of all, you shouldn't be punching people, Taylor, you should really think about your actions. Um, <laughs> and second, um, you just shouldn't do it twice kind of situation. So like, but people don't always learn their lesson the first time. So like, I just want to make sure that it's somewhere in there that we can be tried multiple times for the same offensive yeah. thing. <laughs> Taylor, punch me. I'm dead. Um, uh, sorry, go finish. So yeah, like, can you kind of just explain how that's in there or how it's worded specifically that we can be tried for more than one offense um, if it's harmful? I guess is the best way I can phrase that. Do you have a response to that? You just want to can I add on to that? I feel like what you're trying to say is like double jeopardy. You can't be tried for the same event twice. Yeah. So arson, I, I, I get acquitted of arson. Well, that same arson offense, I can't be tried again. But if I commit arson again somewhere else, that's a different offense. That's a different yeah. offense. So I use the, the, the legal definition of double jeopardy. And basically what it says is no. The old one. English one? Huh? The Constitution, the old English one? That one? Yeah. Double <laughs> jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically what it says is double jeopardy is where you cannot be tried for the same thing in one occurrence. So if yeah, so one Taylor minute. punches someone, we try him, he's let go. We can no longer try it based off of that occurrence. If he does it again, that's a different occurrence. Okay. So, I mean, I can clarify, but that, that was just because I was using the definition. I was using du double jeopardy because that is like the legal definition of double jeopardy. Mm. I need to make it clear. I can definitely type that in there real quick. Yeah. Uh, it's just may, may make that distinction. I'd say. Yeah. And I'd say like maybe like events or something. Wonderful. Um, Stephanie. I don't think, um, I, on, first of all, I really like this idea. Um, I don't think you have to clarify it. I think, um, it's just the definition to help clarify for anyone who is so confused. Um, it's um, it's the the definition of double jeopardy is exactly what you're looking for. It just means the same offense. So like how Mike had just explained, it can be the same kind of thing, but it just has to be a different event that you would be, I yeah. guess, put on trial for. I hate how we're using that language, but yeah, that, yeah. That I didn't know what other word to use. That wasn't specifically to, but right. So that would be that would be it. So it is clarified in the definition of double jeopardy. Um and I think um once we go over we host any kind of trainings with the new counselors, we can just clarify that definition um and then have everyone on the same page. But I think you did wonderful a wonderful job with that section. So two thumbs up. Thank you. Can I... Yeah, James. Uh, so I will also say to regarding that section, because we are removing this as a governing power, the amendment that is coming after this is supposed to specify that this will be temporarily hold power until the end of fall of 2023 or until the new council passes a new accountability process, because that's still something I firmly believe we should do. Currently, it's very confusing and complex. Mm -hmm. um, so like this is technically temporary until fall or until the next council passes that if the new council doesn't and i'll explain this more in the amendment if the new council doesn't pass anything then we would just make this whole section into amendment to the constitution and it would stay as is or be amended how they see fit um but i mostly just wrote this to be more updated a little bit more clear okay um so i have a question about the difference between new business items one and two is so this is a vote on saying that we like this handbook and then business two is voting to implement this handbook the first one will be to vote to approve these changes okay like this will be the new handbook okay. the second one will officially remove its power and you know make it to where the constitution's only power and start striking things from the constitution which i will do if it passes okay so yeah all good because we technically protect the handbook and the constitution, which is why I had to make an amendment to fix that. Great. Um, okay. Um, are there any other dis points of discussion for this handbook rewrite? Seeing none, I call the question. I second that. Um, Naomi.
Wonderful. Stephanie? Yes. Cool. Gabe? Cool. Alex? Yes. Cool. Paul? Yes. Thank you. Taylor, yes. Mike? Yes. And James? Yes. Passes unanimously on to the next order of business, which is the vote on amendment proposal um, six. Should have voted no, just to make you mad. Just to make you mad. Okay. Uh, again, I'll run this through as quickly, and I did not share this with Kenny. Oh, no, it's in the it's Teams. In uh, but I will just run through it quickly. So section one just officially depowers the handbook, as I've been talking about for the past couple of weeks, uh, making it its own. The Constitution will be our sole governing document, so there will be no redundancies or issues. Section two will, as I said, what we're going to be doing is the removal process will state as at least the only power in this handbook up until the end of fall 2023 or until the new council passes a new accountability structure. Should they not pass a new accountability structure, this section of the handbook will be made into an amendment, voted on by the council. And then section three uh, just amends our current constitution to remove handbook from anything. Um, and I think that's pretty much the bulk of it. I'm trying to make sure. Oh, and then it makes sure that section two of the handbook is known as like the rules and decorum. So it's not like if there's a rule in here about how we operate in the office or with each other, that's still like has, I wouldn't say a constitution or a governing power, but like rule power, like if like a group norm. Yeah, like this is the norms basically. <clears throat> um, so just to be clear right now, since we just approved the handbook, the new handbook that is currently a governing document. Still a governing document as of right now. Okay. Cool. Mike. So just a quick question. We have till basically December of next year or next academic year to pass something new. Yeah, you have to tell the end of next year to pass something new. Um, kind of a structure? Yeah. Or it just goes into a amendment and you guys vote to implement it into the constitution if you don't want to change how the current process works. Will you leave like a Right, breadcrumbs for us to kind of pick up, pick that back no, up. It's, it's in like whatever. All this comes in is you just copy and paste the removal process from the handbook. Oh, into the constitution. Into a ham, into an amendment. Vote on it. Oh, vote I see. No, yeah, I'm not making you like. I see. Okay. Plus, no. Most likely, it's gonna be like the judiciary chair's next year yeah. kind of first task. Okay. And okay, I'm always around on campus, so if you need me to clarify, he lives here. Yeah, he I lives basically here. live here, so just yeah. call me up and I'll come hold Mike's hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any other points of discussion on making the handbook a guideline? Seeing none, I call the question. I second that. Okay. Um, Naomi? It is a good meeting, Alex. It is what a meeting. <laughs> it's our last meeting. Perfect. Stephanie? Yes. Gabe. Alex. Yeah. Paul. Yes. Taylor, no. Mike. Yes. James. Yes. And it passes almost unanimously. Congratulations. Um, so that is all of our orders of business today. And this concludes our, oh, sorry. We also have public comment for the next five minutes. Um, <laughs> Over the public here. If there are any members of the public, I apologize for our tardiness. Please make yourself known. <laughs> Like okay, seeing none, um, they can send us an email. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us for our last um, required TSEC meeting. It has been a great year, great advocacy, everyone. Um, any final departing words? Thank you, guys. Release Have the fun. Make a choice, yes. Thank you, guys. Wonderful. Mm. Peace. Bye. Bye. See ya.